Hi guys, this is Dan from Magic Pachinko Restorations with a short video here about how to adjust nails. I had a request from uh, one of the subscribers for some information on how to adjust the nails. So I'm going to try to show you on, on this uh, one that I'm working on right here. Uh, I don't know, obviously the, the background is black. Um, I, I bought some studio lighting and, and um, I don't know if it's good, bad or indifferent because I'm not a professional photographer by any stretch of the imagination. So if anybody has any suggestions, please send them in. So on to the subject of adjusting nails. Um, I ended up purchasing uh, a set right from Japan, from Sankyo. This is a uh, an official, if you will, set of adjustment tools. Uh, there's a hammer. There are two, four, well, actually two um, adjustment tools with uh, pachinko balls on the ends of different diameters. There's a height adjustment tool, and then there are feeler gauges for spacing. And I'm not 100% sure what these are for. It might be up in here or something. I'm not really sure. Uh, I don't use these, but, um, and I usually don't use this hammer. It's just, it's just too nice. I don't want to mess it all up. But um, these are set, pachinko balls are 11 millimeter. And this particular tool is 11.02 at one end and 11.1 at the other end. And then this one is smaller. It's uh, uh, four and six, I believe, 04 and 06. So I usually don't use that one. Um, and then this is the height adjustment tool here. This is the height of the, uh, for the pin. So those are the tools that I use. Now, for folks that don't have these tools, I'll give you a couple of different ways of, of going about this. Um, I bought off eBay uh, a tool very similar to this uh, quite a few years ago. Somebody had just made it just with a shaft and a, a pachinko ball that they had drilled a hole and probably epoxied it on. Unfortunately, the ball kept falling off, so um, I ended up investing in these. If you don't have this, then just take a pachinko ball and, and uh, a stick and epoxy it on because all you have to do is be able to, to go in between the nails to, to gauge with this, okay? Um, with height, and one thing I forgot, so let me get it. Okay, with, with height, if you don't, um, obviously if you don't have something like this, an official tool, um, it's re really easy to make a height gauge. This is uh, balsa wood, but you can also use soft pine or anything that, that is soft. And what you're going to do before you take the nails off of your machine is you're just going to come up to a set of nails and push. So I've got the, the balsa wood against the board, and I'm pushing against the edge of the nails. And, and this is what you end up with. You can see where the, the little marks are. And then you just take an X-Acto knife. And you just cut it. And that becomes your height gauge. So now you can just go like that. Uh, if the nail heads are, are under or just over this, you're okay. If they're, obviously if you drive them too deep, but most of the time you don't drive them too deep. They're, they're up too high. So you can just gauge your nails. If this fits, you're in good shape. So that's the easiest way to do it. Um, with the official tool, you're just putting this right on the board and then the nails have to come in below that. So it's, it's an easy way of doing this. Now you want to do this with your nails. It's very important. Um, people ask, you know, how do you know how to put, how deep to put the nails back in, so on and so forth. Well, obviously this is it, but also keep in mind that when they when they do these, the, I'm assuming they have some sort of a jig that drills all the holes into the, into the wood, and they drill them all at the same depth. So when a nail goes in, I don't have any nails. Uh, when, a nails when a nail goes in, it gets driven into a given depth, and of course they adjust them. But it's pretty much the depth of that hole. So if you pull the nail out, clean it, put the nail back in, it pretty much goes right back where it was depth-wise. So when you're putting nails in, you want to use a soft hammer. Um, I happened, I, I found a, a nice big one, so you don't have to hit as many times, but you want to drive all the nails in with a soft hammer, not, 
that was something like this, a, you know, a, a hard surface hammer. I use this hammer to tap nails one way or the other. Okay. So, um, nails are in, set to the right depth. So the next step is adjusting the nails. So pachinko balls are 11 millimeters. And in the parlors, I'm sure that they set these things just bigger than 11 millimeters. So they would have used that other ball gauge that I have and keep the space between the pins, the nails as tight as possible. I will use the 11.1 on my machines to open them up and give you as the owner of the best chance of actually winning. So when you when you check, you're you're using the gauge just to go in and out like this, and you make sure that as you go through, see now right there, there's some drag, a little bit of drag right there. Now this is the 11 one, and this is uh, I forgot what this is, 1102. Is that right? Yeah, 1102. So the 1102 fits. So that would have been that would have been fine at the parlor, but 111 there's just a touch of drag. So what I would do is I would just take my hammer and just tap a, just gently just a little bit and s spread that out so now my 111 goes through there nice and easily. You can also take a small pair of needle nose pliers and actually grab the, the nails and, and bend them one way or the other. They're very soft, they'll bend quite easily. Um, you just don't wanna uh, bend them a lot because they, they will break. This is the way that it's supposed to be done. There is an art form to it. Um, the nail, okay, so the, the board is like this and the, the nails are gonna go in like this. And this would be a 90 degree angle if you drove the nails straight in. The way the nails are supposed to be is, this is exaggerated, they're supposed to be, let me get it over here, I guess, on an up slant of four degrees. So, so this angle here should be four degrees. Now, obviously it's more like that, but uh, you don't want it at 90, you want it up just a little bit. And I don't measure the, the four degrees, believe me, uh, but I also have a, an eye to w look at the, the the pins or the the the, oh, the nails and make sure they're all tipped up. Um, here's one thing you want to keep in mind: the way that you set the nails. When when a nail is is like this and it's it's bent up and a ball hits it, it's going to go up. When a nail is this way and a ball hits it, it's going to go the opposite direction. So when a ball hits it this way, it goes that. And when it hits it this way, it goes that. Now, obviously, those are all exaggerations. But you you want to have your nails set most all the time. You want them really straight. But what I also try to do is I try to angle them left and right a little bit so that these nails up in here will bounce the ball towards the center attractions. Obviously, there's no center attraction here. I'm, I'm painting it. But... Uh, you want to try to drive the balls to the pay pockets. Now, there, and if you do some more research on this, um, and I found it on, on Google somewhere, um, it's in, written in Japanese, um, but the diagrams show you there's actually um, a, there's an arrangement of, of these pins specifically so that this one bends one way, this one bends a different way, this one bends a different way, these are straight. I mean, it's it's, cra it's crazy. It's it's too much for me. I, I tried playing with it and it was just too difficult. Um, I know the master people that do this know it by heart and they just go in and, and tweak everything. But uh, that's basically the way that it's done. You don't want to open the gaps uh, in your, like in your pay pockets and such, really wide. In other words, if, if it's supposed to be a gap like, like that, don't open it like that thinking that, well, oh, the ball will drop. What it'll do is it'll, it'll hit the nail and just chrome off and it'll never go in the pocket. Where if they're not angled as much, when the ball comes down, it won't bounce as much. 
and you've got a better chance of it going into the pay pocket. Um, you know, obviously you want to set it that way either for your own personal machine or for your, uh, your customer's machines if you're doing uh, restorations for other people. So that's pretty much the way you, you do the nails. Um, if anybody has any questions on that, please just uh, put it in the comments or go to the website and do the contact us thing. And again, if uh, anybody has any suggestions for the lighting, I mean, this is all new to me, so I'll be glad to take any information from anybody that I can. So thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, comment. You know the drill. Thanks a lot.